Born the day before Halloween in 1927, George Martin Gumbert Jr. learned quickly how to scare his parents. While raised on the family farm, his heart was really not into farming. As a teen, he realized his love for flying machines and all things aviation, hitchhiking to the big city of Lexington to take his first flying lessons at the old Cool Meadow Field. When this adventure was subsequently discovered by his mortified parents, his aspirations of flying came to a sudden, if only temporary, stop. After graduating from Eastern Kentucky University, where he played a small but salty right guard for the Colonel's football team, he headed to the University of Louisville for medical school. Studies came before flying, and it wasn't until he graduated from medical school and finished his orthopedic residency in Washington, D.C., that he returned to Kentucky and was able to pursue his passion for flying. Lest we get the landing before the approach, let us backtrack to George's college days at Eastern, where he met one Eva Madden, a pretty co-ed two years his junior. Known to all by her nickname, Skip, the two dated and a romance blossomed, even with aviation undertones. While George was in medical school, Skip's sense of adventure and fascination with flying led her to leave Kentucky to join her sister Shauna as a hostess, the old-fashioned term for flight attendant, with Capital Airlines in Washington, D.C. Skip's move to D.C. had more than a little to do with George's choice of orthopedic residencies, and the two continued to date and eventually married, settling in Alexandria, Virginia. After his residency, George and Skip returned to Kentucky to a small general medical practice in Olive Hill, Kentucky. There they learned to fly and received their private pilot licenses. After their brief stint in Olive Hill, George accepted an offer to join one of the first orthopedic practices in Lexington. Orthopedics kept George busy during the day, but the couple headed straight for Bluegrass Field once work was over and continued to own several small planes over the coming years, what became the family Truckster a twin-engine, four-place beach travel air, 8-4 Romeo. Those carefree days at Bluegrass Field fostered a close friendship that would have a lasting impact on our aviation museum. George and Skip met a soft-spoken line boy, Wendell Murphy, who pumped aviation gas and had acquired exactly one used car to rent to pilots when they came to Lexington. Wendell and his wife Betty would go on to found a still thriving Avis car rental franchise as well as Murphy Surf Air Trucking Company and perhaps most importantly to be a co-founder of the museum where you sit tonight. George's passion for flying became intertwined with his medical profession in several ways. He became a member of a fledgling national group, the Flying Physicians, whose purposes included furtherance of flying and humanitarian medical missions. George eventually became the group's national president. Another mix of flying and medicine occurred when George was named team physician of the Kentucky Wildcats football team back in the 1960s. Besides flying to all the away games, George also flew coaches on recruiting trips at his own expense. This was before the days of fractional interest Lear jets owned by big boosters and the coaches were happy to climb in George's four place 8-4 Romeo and head to see their next recruit. George's recruitment taxi spread to other sports and he developed an all-round sports medicine practice, operating on the likes of Sam Bowie, Derek Ramsey, Sonny Collins, and other UK athletes. The origins of the Aviation Museum were modest at best. George and Wendell talked for some time and their dreams took wing with the birth of the Kentucky Aviation History Roundtable. Most meetings were held in the evenings at George's medical office, many time with the high cuisine of Long John Silver's, supplied by fellow roundtable enthusiast and Jericho head Nick Sanders. Even in the early days, many a historically significant speaker was a guest, given George's connections with the National Aviation Hall of Fame in Dayton, Ohio. Over the years, that list included astronaut and enshriny Story Musgrave, John Paul Riddle, founder of Emory Riddle University, Major General Lee Wade, Douglas Wrong Way Corrigan, and General Paul Tibbetts, pilot of the Enola Gay of World War II atomic bomb fame. With increasing support from the community and a stream of national caliber speakers, the Roundtable Fathers took the dream to the next level, the creation of the Aviation Museum of Kentucky. The mission was clear, to further aviation careers for the youth of the Commonwealth and preserve Kentucky's amazing contribution to the history of aviation. George was one of several that pledged financial and personal resources to its birth. The former Max's hangar at Bluegrass Field was to be its new home. The Aviation Museum held its grand opening April 15, 1995, with the Doolittle Raiders as the honored guests. The Raiders held their 53rd anniversary reunion at the museum, considered by many in the aviation world to be a coup. 
Since that time, the museum has continued to prosper with ever-increasing numbers in its summer aviation camps now held at airports statewide. Growing pains led to a major move for the museum into the spacious quarters where you sit today. George and Skip continued to shepherd the museum, supplying memorabilia and aircraft for its exhibits. Along the way, they produced two children, Mary Jo and George III, both licensed pilots and aviation enthusiasts. George never lost his love for aviation, nor his desire to inspire young people and families, and still considers his part in the creation of the Aviation Museum of Kentucky as one of his greatest accomplishments. It is therefore fitting that George Martin Gumbert Jr. be enshrined into the official Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.